Hi, so welcome to lecture 2a. Um, for this one I'm going to assume that maybe you have very little knowledge about files and directories on computers, um, so I'll try to start off very basic. So, um, I'm going to assume that you're very familiar with Windows. Um, it's very similar with Mac. Um, you know with Windows when you start up your file explorer you see um, you're basically in a home directory for your user. You can see documents and desktop and stuff like that. Um, well it's very very similar for Linux when we start off in a graphical user interface. So I'm using Kubuntu. So this looks very different from Matrix but the concept is the same, right? Um, so this is say a home user for students and you can see I've got documents and desktop and everything like that. Um, so let me scroll down here through the notes. Uh, you should be paying attention to notes as we go through. So you know as we go through you can double click on these and you get into different locations. So this is inside documents. I can go back, I can look at desktop. I've got nothing in desktop. Okay, so this is this should be if you're not familiar with this sort of idea of files and stuff like that because you've grown up on iPads or whatever, um, it seems like most modern operating systems try to conceal how the file system really works from you. Um, so it might be new for you, but probably for the most part it isn't. Okay, so I'm going to bring up my terminal and we're going to take a look at one of the same things. So let me bring this over here and I'm going to drop it here. <clears throat> Let me just start this off with cleared. So you can see uh, from the very beginning uh, that we have a command prompt here. Um, I've just logged in with this user called student and you can see student at, oh, sorry, I'm trying to clear the screen here. Student at uh, host name basically with the little tilde and a dollar sign. All of these things actually have a special meaning. Uh, but the first thing I can mention about this is that we are logged in as a user called student. Okay, um, This should be familiar to you from the last uh, lecture, but I'll go through it again. Here is ls. So with ls, I'm beginning to see exactly the same information that I saw from my graphical user interface. And with the cd command, I can start doing the exact same things as I was doing in the graphical user interface. So I can do this. I'm going to use tab to autocomplete the path there. And we can do the same thing again. We can use ls. You can see that one little file that I have in there that's just telling you where you are. I'm going to use cd dot dot. So remember that the dot dot uh, indicates parent directory. Every directory that you have has one and only one parent directory, except for root, of course, which is the top of the file system. And there's therefore no parents. Okay, So I go back here. Where am I? I am in my home directory. And one more command that you should remember from last week is print working directory. So there we are. There we can see the actual file path for where we are. Okay, Let me go through that again. I can just demonstrate to you. CD documents. You are in documents and print working directory. There you go. Um, so one thing that you can always do, you can type in CD with no other options or arguments or anything, and that will always get you back to the user's home directory. Okay. So hopefully that's pretty clear. Let's move on to the next thing. So let me scroll down over here. So we've talked about navigation over here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more. You can see some things over here that don't show up in mine. We're going to talk about that, don't worry. Okay, so the next thing we're talking about is creating, copying, and moving files. Okay, so let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do is use the touch command. So I'm going to touch test1. And let's run ls and let's see what we got. So you can see I've got desktops, documents, that's the same as before, and now this new file called test1. Um, I'm going to run now a little bit of a variation on ls. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm running ls, but then I'm giving it a new option. 
or a flag, if you will. Um, <clears throat> what this is going to do is give me a long listing for whatever I have um, for whatever I have in the in the current location. Okay, so let's run that now, and you can see what's different about this one. So this command has a lot of extra information. Okay, so these are the same. Uh, this, this is a date over here, and this is telling you the uh, last modification date. So if you look over here, 1215, and if you look at my clock over here, you can see that this test one was last modified at 1215, which makes sense. And by modified, I actually created it and stuff like that. Okay, over here we have um, the D indicates that this is a directory. The dash indicates that this is just a regular file. This number over here is the number of links. We're not going to talk about that. Now we're going to talk about that later on. Um, oh, and as well as this here, which is uh, file permissions. We're going to talk about that. This is the user, this is the group, and this is the file size. So you may notice that this test one that I've created with touch has zero bytes. It is an empty file. There's nothing in it. So that's one of the first commands that you should remember is this creates an empty file. Okay, so touch just creates a file but there's nothing inside that file until we start to do stuff with it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you and you can follow along with the notes that I've posted. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is a copy. Um, this is going to copy a file, and the file that I'm going to copy is test1. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you, this is the command, cp, stands for copy. Uh, use whatever you want to try and remember all these things. Uh, memorization is a part of this course, so best to get started on it now. And copy is going to take um, two arguments, okay? So for us, we need to indicate what we're going to copy, and that's going to be the target. So the target is what already exists, and the destination. And the destination is going to be where we want to put the new copy. Okay? So target exists, and destination is something new. So I already said that I want to um, copy test one. So what I can do is start to type this out, hit tab. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is indicate where I want to put this new copy. So just to keep it easy for now, I'm going to put it in the same location as where I am right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just give it the name test two. And when we run this, list command again. Uh, you can see test one and test two. Okay. Oh, by the way, so usually there's some sort of alias or something like this and basically whenever you see me typing in LL you know what I'm actually typing in is LS dash L. Okay, so don't get too confused about that. Uh, later on we're going to talk about creating your own aliases, which are just, you know, basically shortcuts to make your life easier. Okay, so we have created test two. Now what I'm going to do is show you another command called move. So it, you can kind of see we're starting off with like copy and copy and cut and paste and kind of that stuff that you're familiar with. So we've done a control C, now we're gonna do sort of a control X, sorry. So the move command is MV and it's going to follow the same convention. We're going to give it a target, which is something that already exists, and then we're going to give it a uh, new name basically. And what this is going to do is almost do the same thing as copy, except um, we're not going to duplicate it. We're just going to, um, well, it's like control X, right? So we're going to take whatever was there and going to essentially rename it 
and um, have it in a different location, okay? So let me do this. The target I'm going to look at is test two, and the uh, new name for this, so I could move this to another location, but I'm going to stay in the current location, and I'm going to give it a new name called test three, okay? So when I run this, now you can see that we no longer have test two, but we do have test three. So you can kind of think as of move as having like two different purposes. We could take test two and we could move it to another place in the file system, or we could use move to basically rename test two. Okay, so that's kind of what I've done here as I've as I've renamed test two to test three. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run this command ls-l documents. So you notice I can look inside documents uh, without actually going there. Okay? So you can see that um, we have UR in documents. We have that one sort of like a placeholder file or whatever. And I've got these, and I'm going to demonstrate the next use of move here. So my target is going to be test three, and I'm going to give it the argument documents. So when I look at this now, you can see we no longer have test three in here. But when I run this command again, uh, you can see that test three has been moved. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we're talking about is um, copying and moving directories, which are a little bit different. I'm going to show you how they are different. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm using tab each time you see me stop typing. Basically, I'm going to move into documents, and let's see what we've got in here. So we've got test three from before. We have that placeholder file file called UR in documents, which is just basically there to tell you where you are. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a directory. So the command for that is mkdir, so make directory. Um, I'm just going to give it the name level one. I'm going to run this ll command again. So you can see that I have level one created in there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is try this. I'm going to try and create level two slash level three. Okay, so what does this mean? Um, the slashes, hopefully um, you see and remember that these are indicating different uh, levels or different turns. So level one is a subdirectory of documents. What I'm basically saying here is I want to create another subdirectory of documents called level two. And I want to create a subdirectory of that called level three. Okay? So if that doesn't make too much sense, you'll see what I mean as we go. So the first thing I try to do, I try to run this. Um, it cannot create directory level two slash level three because there's no file or directory. Okay, what does that mean? Well, basically, um, make directory is failing because level two doesn't exist yet. There's one way around it. We're going to use another option with the dash p. And what the dash p indicates is that uh, we're going to just um, let it automatically create the parent. The parent being level two in this case. Okay, so you can see before this did not work. I run it again, you see no messages whatsoever. So let's take a look at what's inside. So now we have level two. Let's just do LL level two. And you can see inside level two, we've created level three, okay? So make directory will not create parents for you unless you tell it to with the option dash p. Okay. Here's another here's another way to visualize everything. I'm going to use tree over here, so you can see that I've got level one, 
I've got level two and then the subdirectory level three. I've got test three there and I've got this placeholder file you are in documents. Okay, so let's say what we want to do here is we want to put this level two inside level one so that if we would have level one with two subdirectories called level two and level two and each of those directories will have a subdirectory called level three um, so we're going to use the move command for this like you know from copy uh, copy is going to use a dash arc to try to make it recursive um, we're in this similar situation where level two is not empty so you would kind of think that we would need to use a dash r over here um, and let me set the destination as being level one so when I run this it says invalid option so here is one weird gotcha just to remember about this stuff um, move does not require a dash r option copy does but not move kind of inconsistent but that's just how it is so we'll roll with it okay so let me get rid of the dash r and we'll try this and we're gonna get this message cannot move level 2 to level 1 slash level 2 directory not empty what does that mean well we'll get into it you'll kinda notice that we have if we were to do this we would have in level 1 two subdirectories with the same name so that's kinda causing issues um, so let me start off by doing something else I'm gonna I'm gonna have the same I'm gonna have the same target which is level 2 which is in my current directory so this one right here um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is just show you sort of another move command so what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna start using tab to try and uh, complete these paths okay so I'm gonna do this take a look at this command and visualize what it's doing visualize what you expect to see in the next step so I run this no complaints no news is good news let me take a look at this again aha so this was the level two that we had as the target and this is where it ended up this is the destination okay so this is not exactly what we want so let's um let's just mess around with it a little bit so maybe the first thing i'm going to do um, is just change directory into level three so that i can be working with level two there okay so once again oops actually this is a good example I'm pressing tab right now and nothing is auto completing so I know that I don't know that this is a typo but this is the first hint that something is going wrong so let me get rid of that and now I'm able to complete stuff so I'm gonna go to level one level two level three stop there okay this is what I see here so I'm gonna use move again and I'm going to use move to change the name of this I'm gonna change this to level 2a because that kinda of seems to make sense okay now I want to go back to where I was before um, I could use the dot dots to just move up to level 2 and then level 1 and then documents um, but I can actually chain these together. So I have cd dot 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 dot, and that's going to get me up to level one. I can use tree to take a look at what we've got over here. A lot of the um, copies that I've been doing have been sort of like this. So I'd be copy the target to a new location, for example. Um, uh, but this time, you can almost think of that as a push. We are in the current location. We have a target that is in our current location, and then we are pushing that to some other location. Okay? Um, but we can change it up a little bit. We can try something else. 
um, we can point, we can use a move command, and we can have the target be not in our current location, but somewhere else. And then we can have it point, um, we can have our destination point to where we are right now. I'm going to do level 2, level 3, level 2A. This again is our target. And what we want to do is move it to our current location. So we have uh, one useful shortcut that we can use to indicate the current location. Okay. And that is just a dot. So the dot dot is for parents and dot is just for the current location. So watch what happens when I run this. So first of all, you don't see any error messages, so that's great. So we can take a look at tree and this is exactly what we want, right? We have level two and level two A, which are on the same level. They're like siblings and level three and level three over here. Okay, so that is um, maybe the first example using the current location kind of shortcut. Use it very sparingly. It doesn't always come in handy. It's not as common as using parent for whatever, but uh, it comes in quite handy. Um, so let's move on to the next thing. So I'm going to try another thing over here, and I'm going to try using a copy. Once again, my target is going to be somewhere that is not the current location. So I'm going to go over here. So somewhere in the parent directory is something that I'm looking for. Uh, what is the parent directory? The parent directory of level one is documents. And I'm going to type in test three. And I'm going to, uh, once again, indicate the current location. What is the current location? Level one. Okay, take a moment to think about what I just did. Uh, what do you expect to see once I type in the LL command? Okay, time's up. Here's what it is. So test three is one of our empty files from before, which was sitting in documents. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is removing, deleting stuff, basically. Um, so the first thing I'm going to demonstrate is removing a file. You can see the file that I have in front of me here is test3. So the command to be doing this is rm, and I'm just going to give it a target of test3. You could give it a bunch of different file names if you want to remove a lot of things at the same time. Uh, but I just have one file here, so I'm going to do that. And you can take a look, it's gone. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is maybe go into uh, level 2. Yeah, just level 2. You can see that I have uh, one directory called level 3. And I can peek inside of level 3 just like this. And you can see that it's empty. So the command for deleting empty directories is rmdir and I can just give it a target of level 3 and take a look it's gone so let me move back up here this is what it looks like so far so the next thing I'm gonna do is try to remove uh, well let's try rmdir level 2a slash just 2a okay so you can see that this is not an empty directory and it's going to complain because the directory is not empty. So um, this is kind of similar to copy where you need to give it a recursive, uh, you need to give it a recursive option and kind of, it's kind of confusing, um, but we don't use rmdir here. We use rm-r, okay? So here's the rule, rm is for files rmdir is for empty directories and rm-r is for non-empty directories. Uh, it's kind of confusing but you know there you go. So I point at it again and this time there's no complaints nothing like that and you can see that I only have I only have one thing left now. So one more thing I want to um, just 
talk about really quickly uh, before moving on is this idea of absolute versus relative file paths. This is absolutely important to remember for final exam even and um, yeah, it's really important. So we can talk about absolute and relative file paths at this point. Um, they are different, they have different uses. Um, let me show you some of that right now. So this is where we are. We are still in student, uh, the student home directory. When I'm moving around to documents or anything like that, when I'm using dot dot or anything like that, um, I'm using relative file paths. And so on the Linux system, we can have many directories called documents. In fact, we probably do if we have lots of users and they all have their own documents directories. So when I type in CD documents here, it's going to succeed. If I type in CD documents here, it's not going to succeed because there is no documents here. We have level one, but we don't have documents. So this command CD documents only works in certain cases. It only works when we're in basically home. Um, because if we're not in home, then it doesn't exist and the shell doesn't know what we're trying to do. So this command is relative because it depends on the current situation. Our situation right now is that we are in documents and so we this won't work. Um, but when we change our situation, when we move up into our parent, then it will. Okay, so that's kind of what relative means. It uh, means it's situational. Relative paths are much easier to type in, um, but they change based on where you are, right? Contrast this with uh, the output that we get from PWD. So PWD gives us an absolute file path, okay? So what this means is that this command, typing in home slash student slash documents, will always work. I can run that here and it works. I can go into level one, something like that, and I can go back here it will succeed, it will complete. Um, because this is this is absolute, right? Uh, it takes a lot more typing, but this is starting from the very top of the file system, going down to home, going down to students, going down to documents. So it's very, very, very specific about where we wanna go. We don't wanna go to home slash Eric slash documents. We don't wanna go to home slash user slash documents we're going to home slash student slash documents so that is an absolute path all absolute paths start with the forward slash they always start from root this is kind of like um, when we were talking about last week when we went to the tree and you always have the option of starting from the very top this is what an absolute path does um, relative means it's relative to whatever current location that you're in, right? CD dot dot, the dot dot has a meaning that is relative to where we are right now. And that's all it means. Uh, there's one other that we end up talking about later on, and that is relative to home. And home in this case is using the tilde to get around. So the tilde has different meanings depending on how you're logged in. I'm logged in as student right now, so when I go to tilde, it's going to the student's home directory. But if I'm logged in as root, it's going to go to the root's home directory. If I'm logged in as Eric, it's going to go to Eric's home directory. And with this, I can do other stuff. I can go to, you know, desktop, for example and that gets me there. Okay, so we're talking, we're starting by talking about absolute and relative, um, but there's also relative to home, and uh, you know, we'll work on that as well.